This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to Mill Road Church Online. What a blessing to have you here today. Hey, let's just join our hearts together uh, in worship. Before we do, go ahead and hit that share button. Also, I'd like to encourage you to, to follow us here on Facebook. Uh, we'd appreciate that so much. But again, hitting that share button, we're able to let all those that we're connected with uh, know that we're having church, and we want everybody to come in and be a part with us today. Again, let's worship together in this moment. Good morning, everybody. You ready to worship? Let's worship together.
will go where you go. I will stay where you stay. Oh. Cause I Listen to the words. 
Like Jesus in the garden, will you take this cup from me? Like Jesus in the garden, you don't call when you won't lead. I want to love like you love. I want to bleed like you bleed. Oh, cause I don't want to go if you're not going before me. I don't want to go if you're not going before me. I don't want to go if you're not going before me. I don't want to go if you're not going before me. If you're not going before me, Lord. What a blessing to be able to worship together with one another every Sunday. Well, hey, I just again want to bring us back to the scriptures and let's just dive into our subject today. Last week I talked to you in the the light of Vision 2020. I talked about us having the envision of what God wants for our life. And then we also talked about how that uh, Jesus had told Paul he was sending him out. He was telling him to go to establish commitment to deeds in keeping with their repentance and how important that is. So not only are we as a believer, our, our vision should be the same as Jesus' vision, and that is to seek and to save those that are lost, but also that we may establish commitment with those who are saved to deeds in keeping with their repentance. Now, again, just so that you understand, deeds have to do with an action that is performed intentionally or consciously. Now it's important we understand that our deeds, those things that we do intentionally, those are actions. And yes, they entail the works of our life. God wants us to live out the works of repentance in our life. Today I want to talk to you, now we talked about envision, now I want to talk to you about the warning of division. The warning of division. Now, this is just simply the act of pursuing different purposes. All right? Different purposes. Different visions. Or divisions. Understand that Satan has come to seek and to... Or Satan, rather, has come to, uh, to kill, steal, and destroy. He's come to try to divide and to conquer. And when it comes to... Uh, this area, we have to understand that we as a believer have got to be careful because we can lose sight of the right vision or, or the right purpose. And thereby, we find ourselves pursuing a different purpose or a different vision. Now, I can't help but think about the Tower of Babel. And God had told the people what his purpose or his vision was. And God said to the people that day to go into all the world and multiply. And that was his purpose or his vision. But man's vision or man's purpose was to establish a safe community. Now, please don't miss this. I think sometimes we can get so involved in our own vision, our own purpose in life that Satan brings about that division. And so no longer are we seeing the right vision, which is the vision God has called, His purpose, He has brought us here, and we can get so caught up in the things of, of establishing safe community, finding ourselves in a safe place, a safe environment. Again, not that safety uh, can't be found, but our safety is found in the Lord. That doesn't mean we should be careless doesn't mean that uh, we, we should not be wise in our decisions. We should. But on the same hand, uh, we, we've got to guard our heart. We have to be certain that we are pursuing the right things, that our purpose, our vision is right. So just like the, the day of the Tower of Babel, God had to bring about a great 
uh, division or, or he had to, to uh, bring about the very element that would cause them to disperse and to go into all the world. And so he confused their language. And in that confusion of languages, we find that the people of the world then scattered over the world and began to multiply. That is what God had accomplished. And he had to bring about that uh, with this sense of confusion of them. But today, I want you to know this, that God's purpose or his vision is to go into all the world and to spiritually multiply. That's God's purpose. That is his vision for us. But man's purpose or vision is to surround ourselves with the comforts of life. And we have to be careful that we we'd not get sucked in to seeking the comforts of life and the things that, that please us and the things that bring us a sense of, of comfort and, and satisfaction. But to know that, that God has a purpose and a vision for our life. Not only individually, but even as a congregation, as a church. There's a vision that God has for us. But Satan wants to bring division. And so we have to understand that division is found sometimes. It can be found among individuals. And he can bring conflicts with people. And that's certainly true. But before things even go there, that's the obvious. Before thing, things even go to that place. I want you to know that Satan is about bringing division in your life. He wants to divide your vision in order that you lose your sight on the right vision. And that's the vision that Christ has given us, the purpose. Christ has come. Our vision ought to be the same as Christ. And so before we can ever understand the, the peace and the joy and the community that He can give us with other people, we have to find that peace with God first. We have to take on His vision, His purpose in our own life. I want you to look with me for just a moment at Mark chapter 3 and verse number 24. In Mark chapter 3 and verse 24, look what it says. If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will, uh, will not be able to stand. Now think about that for a moment. If a kingdom is divided against itself, what is... Jesus come to do. He's come to set up his kingdom. Not his earthly kingdom, but a spiritual kingdom right now. And that spiritual kingdom, the scripture says, is as a believer within us. And so if he can divide our vision, our purpose, he conquers the kingdom. We are to be about kingdom building. That is the purpose God's given us individually as believers, but also collectively as a community of faith, as a church. Our responsibility is to live out the vision or the purpose of God. Satan, he wants to bring about that division. He wants to bring about a, uh, when we're not living out the right vision, then we, by nature, thereby, we find ourselves living out a different vision. And therefore, it becomes division in our life, spiritual division. That we can be focused on the purpose of Christ for our life. How important that is. And then it goes into even making it more personal, a house that's divided against itself. A house that's divided against itself. In other words, even within your home, there's people within your home. And when there is a conflict of vision and I think that Satan has used that even within churches. And therefore you find all the different denominations that ends up because the vision of Christ has been then diluted by different vision, different purpose. And the church is searching after a purpose of its own. And it has lost its purpose, that right vision that God has called us to, to seek and to save that which is lost. And then to help establish uh, the believer in a spiritual, uh, a, a spiritual place uh, that's going to bring about uh, purpose and, and is going to bring about uh, that, that, that commitment of doing that which is right in the eyes of God, uh, to do the deeds that is keeping to our repentance 
to live out our faith. What good is our faith if it doesn't work? God wants our works to be the right thing. And it's not just working, but it's doing the right work. It's living out the right purpose and the right vision. Again, in Luke chapter 11 and verse number 17, simply it says, But he, knowing their thoughts, this is Christ, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a house divided, or rather, and a divided household falls. I want you to know that God has called us to be united as a people for the purpose of Christ, not to allow ourselves to have division within ourselves, that we not seek out different purposes for what for what we're supposed to do, but to understand there is one purpose God has called us to, and that's to reach out to those that are lost, even to those that that might not be like us, even to those that the the world, others around us might wonder why in the world we'd be reaching out to them. See, because God has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Only those that are sick need a physician. And we need to point people to the physician, Jesus Christ, the healer of the soul. Knowing this, that we have to go and to spiritually multiply and to understand that we will lay waste if not. In other words, we will be useless, good for nothing. But uh, as the scripture says, if we're not being the salt of the earth, then uh, we'll be like that salt that is good for nothing but to be uh, thrown out on the ground and, and walked on by the foot of man. To be used for only the purpose of, of the path where there's weeds. To be thrown out for the salt to bring a death to the weeds, to create a path. Look, our life is made for more than that. It's made more than for pursuing riches or for pursuing uh, wealth or fame or, or, or any influence or whatever it is that your life might be pursuing. I heard this and I thought this was really, uh, really uh, an important piece and it's just simply this. What you hope for is simply what you live for. What you hope for is what you live for. What are you hoping for? Is your hope in Jesus Christ? Is your hope in reaching a lost world? Or is your hope in having a better home, a better job, having a perfect family? What is your hope in? Because what you hope for is what you live for. Are you hoping for that establishment of use that God can have of your life making an impact, making a difference in the lives of those around you. I want you to know this. As we uh, are in this month of missions and emphasizing that, I want our heart, our purpose, our vision to be the same as Christ, that we're reaching out to a lost and dying world, that the last words Jesus said to His disciples before He ascended into heaven was go into all the world and preach the gospel baptizing them. I want you to know that we have a responsibility of establishing people in their faith to open their eyes, to give them the Word of God. We can do that, not only in Evansville, not only in the tri-state area, not only in the state of Indiana and the state of Kentucky, but we can do that around the world through our missionaries. But we can't do it without your help. I want you to know that as a believer, we must unite together for one vision, to not be divided in our vision, but in one vision of reaching the world with the gospel of Christ. Will you help us do that? Will you be a part of that as a believer, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, that your deeds uh, may point to the repentance, you're living out the deeds of repentance in your life, It's a life that's been changed by Christ and now it has a new purpose, a new vision. Will you live out that vision? Will you allow God to unite what you have, your energy, your your possessions, your time, all that is representative of who you are, uniting that together for a greater purpose of our own than our own? Knowing that Christ's purpose is the real purpose, the real vision. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to know this. God wants to forgive you of your sins. 
All who come to him, he will in no wise cast out. He died on the cross for you, was buried, and rose again the third day. That whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. You must first admit you're a sinner. Realize and admit that he's the Savior. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And then call on him to be your personal Lord and Savior. Invite him to come into your life. To know through the obedience of repentance that Christ brings about salvation. You become a child of God. Then live out the deeds of repentance in your life. Unite together with this community of faith. God has given his life for the church on the cross of Calvary as well. And the church is the people of God. It's not the building, it's the people. God wants us to unite as people to live out the vision, the purpose of Christ. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and your grace. God, I pray you'll do an amazing work in the lives of those that are here today, that are a part of this program. God, I pray that you would just uh, infuse in their life uh, a, a great work that you want to do in them, infuse in their life uh, the purpose and the vision. Lord, may it be over-consuming in their life. May they just uh, see the importance of that and live that to the fullest and not to allow Satan to divide their vision. Lord, that he not bring division in their life. Lord, that he not bring about division in the church, but Lord, that you'll unite us stronger as a people and help us to grow a force that the gates of hell will not be able, be able to prevail against. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you and thank you for being here today. We want to encourage you to be a part with us. Hey, come and be with us at 80 West Mill Road. We want to invite you to come and fellowship together with this body of believers. But also, we want to just ask you to unite your energy, your efforts together with us. And uh, we're, we're just going to have Brian to share with you a little bit about how that can happen. So God bless you and thank you for being here today. Thanks for being with us today. If you enjoyed the experience, like, love, share, notify, and subscribe. No greater way to share God's Word to social media. Today we gave you multiple opportunities to worship. We first gave you a chance to worship with your voice through song. Then we gave you an opportunity to worship with your mind through the message. Now we're going to give you an opportunity to worship with your heart through tithes and offering. Open up your favorite web browser, click in the URL, type in millroad.tv. That will send you to our web page. If you click in the upper right hand corner, there's a give button. It will send you to our push pay system where you'll be able to give a one-time or reoccurring giving. We hope you enjoyed the experience today. We want to see you next time. God bless.